Okay, um, well, we're mostly making this video to, um, shoot the breeze. It's kind of late at night, I can't sleep, so we're going to cover some multiple topics. Um, shaved, obviously. Um, also have a haircut, but I don't think you guys can see it too well. Uh, there you go. Now you can kind of see it. Anywho, no, oh, there you go. Okay, let's just do it this way. It'll look kind of crappy, but hey. Frankly, all of them look crappy lately. I don't know what's up with my webcam. I think it's the room. Uh, I moved into a new room, and yay, I get to move again later next week. Uh, actually, later this week, technically now, because it's, yeah, Sunday. Um, yeah, new house. Uh, one wearing got basically sold out from under us when we were getting ready to buy it, so, yeah, it kind of sucks. So, we're getting the boot. Anywho, we'll... You know, we're going to find a new floor. No, no big deal there. It's just going to be a major inconvenience. Uh, I hate moving. I do. But anyways, um... Yeah, for some reason it's this new room. I think it's because of how the light is set up. And, uh, the room is set up. It has a lot more glare. So my videos always have me showing up as, like, this really bright white. Yeah, like this, only with, you know, bright backlighting. In fact, worse, it almost looks like I'm glowing off my, uh... <clears throat> I mean, I have, like, the distortion glow. Kind of like when you, when, like, light hits a super shiny object or something. You know what I mean. Super smooth object, and it shines up. But anyway, not the point. Um, so yeah, I'm doing it this way. Otherwise, I'd flip the light on. I don't really have any other rooms in the house that give me decent lighting. But we're gonna see what the situation is at the new place. Um possibly going to be moving to uh, Colorado soon. I don't think uh, we were going to move you know, straight from here, but the deadline kind of creeped up on us. Um, looks like we're going to have to move to a new place here for a little while until we find a place there. So, here I'm going to stay for at least a little while, it looks like. Unless something really changes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it really changes. It would have to. Um, now, let's see here. Uh, what do I want to talk to you guys about? Okay, yeah. Um, that discussion we had. Um, the Skype conversation, not going to happen. It's just uh, not. I don't know if people heard that, but uh, it can't. There's uh, way too many people having way too many Skype issues. I wanted to be involved. Um, people who can only be on at like, certain times and other people who wanted to be involved um, can't be on during those times, you know, so we did the video response thing, didn't get too many responses though, um, I've got a couple of people who've said they're gonna work on one, but they haven't done it yet, um, you know, I don't know if they decided they had better things to do with their time, or if they forgot, you know, no big deal, I just want to get as much input as possible, as it stands now, I think we have a total of two or three, uh, video responses, which I'm going to link to down below, um, and then we're going to talk about all kinds of, all kinds of stuff tonight, okay, what else, um, uh, oh yeah, well, a few things, first thing I want to talk about, there was a UFC fight tonight, and, um, <clears throat> It was uh, Shane Carwin's comeback fight, and I did talk about this earlier, <clears throat> in that people were talking some crap about him, and I wanted to address that, and I think I made my point fairly well. Um, I'm not going to say it was a flawless thing, but, you know, it, it was just ticking me off. Well, here's the deal. The guy fought, and he did lose. Um, Junior Dos Santos did have a better game plan. He executed it flawlessly. Um, Shane didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the fight, so this was kind of expected. But what he did do, what was unexpected, was what he did do. See, everyone was expecting that this was going to go one round. And um, it did wind up going to a decision. It was ironic, and everyone kept saying it. Watch, they say, no way, this goes to a decision. It's going to go to a decision, and it did. But... Um, the thing is, everyone kept saying things about Carwin, like, uh, he can't take those punches, and he did. Uh, they kept saying he's not, you know, faster than he was, and he was. Not, 
not as fast as the other guy, mind you, but he was faster than he used to be. Um, they said that he didn't have the cardio to go more than one round. He'd gas out and it would be able He went the distance. And he still had some fight left in him, even after getting smashed. Um... But what's really getting to <clears throat> what's really getting to me is every meme they've had about this guy that um you know all this stuff's going on was pretty much utterly destroyed tonight, but people are still using it and they're still uh mocking him for these very things that he just disproved tonight even after it happened uh <laughs> I mean, wow. It's like the guy can't even make a statement to some people. Um, even when he's earned respect, they won't give it. I don't know what the heck the issue is there. They just seem bound and determined to declare him to be fake and say that he needs to be kicked out, even though he's only had two losses his entire career. Um, I mean, he's 12-2 and two now. So, and those 12s were one, that 12 was one right after another, after another, after another. So I'm really not seeing the, uh, you know, fact, I'm, I'm not, you know, seeing how this guy's fake, but there are people with worse records that they seem to think are legit, so I, I don't know, not my place to say, but, um, you know, that, I just find that very disappointing, uh, the guy busted his butt to get back in there. Hasn't fought in over a year. Had a fight scheduled, then had to pull out due to a back injury. Then had another fight scheduled, always, always down the line. Then has to, you know, get ready for this one. Ahead of what he, was, what he normally would have had. So it really cut his time to prepare. And even with a year's worth of ring rust after getting off the surgery and everything, you know, the surgery did help. So, <clears throat> you know. I'm not saying that's actually going to affect his performance too much, but for, you know, a lot of people it would. <coughs> Thankfully, the surgery was a success. But, you know, uh, all this crap happens. He goes in there, he still performs very well, and there are still people giving him hell about it. I don't know what to say. At any rate, <laughs> uh, that's that. Now, oh, it's, it's summertime, and of course summertime means all the big blockbuster movies are going to come out. And I'm going to give you a few predictions here. Uh, one of them is going to be, I'm not going to call it a review, I'm just going to tell you why I'm not bothering to see it. Uh, when a lot of people seem to think it's supposed to be the god of all movies so far this year. And that would be X-Men First Class. I'm not going to see it. Just because uh, I've done some digging. And first and foremost, there's all kinds of comic continuity problems. I mean, big time. There's even movie continuity problems. Problems with uh, continuity from the other movies. But I mean, for God's sakes, it's supposed to be the first class or whatever. <sighs> I mean, Beast winds up blue because he tries to use Mystique's blood to cure himself, and I guess since she's blue, he's blue too now. Um, Angel got turned into a chick. Now, see, here's the thing. Angel turned into a woman I can live with. You know, gender bending has happened before. This wouldn't be the first time, and it probably won't be the last time. Especially with someone who winds up becoming a side character if they're going to try to relaunch it. Uh, I would have preferred that they at least get gender right, but hey, stuff happens. Like, um, you know, whatever. But here's what really gets me. Pixie Wings. She's not an angel, she's a freaking fairy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, Havoc. Oh, my God, Havoc. Havoc was one of my favorite X-Men characters. Uh, so was um, Nightcrawler. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not the orthodox type. But, uh, I liked Nightcrawler, which is why I was glad to see him in X2, but then he was severely underused. He could have and should have been in that next movie, but he wasn't. Um, I'm not even going to get into X3, because I'll, I'll tell you this much, a game of X3 came out, like, long before the movie did with a completely different plot line to, uh, what finally happened. I think it had something to do with the director swap, and so they went with a different story. I, I'm, I'm not sure what went on there. I just know that the game was actually ten times better than the movie plot-wise. But, um, uh, yeah. And then we have, um, you know, uh, Havoc. Havoc, I thought, was really cool. Um, his abilities were very similar to Cyclops in that, you know, energy projection, only he, uh, wasn't limited to his eyes. Now this, uh, while you might see it as beneficial, because he can actually look around without those freaking sunglasses on, not so much. Not necessarily. Because, you know, at the same time, Cyclops, if he wants to shut it off, he can, um, you know, the ruby lenses or the, uh, you know, even just shutting his eyes will shut it off. Havocs could go off at any time. But now they've got some sort of weird conduit he can channel through. Um, you know, it, there's, it, it doesn't even work the same way. Um, which was really disappointing, but then again, you know, I don't know. He's supposedly learning how to use it at this point, so. Maybe some leeway, but then I find out, I realize, this movie is set how many years before Cyclops shows up? Scott and Alex Summers were, uh, brothers. Alex Summers, a.k.a. Havoc, is supposed to be his little brother. And here he is, basically old enough to be his dad, maybe even his grandpa. I <laughs> mean, really? Wow. See, the reason that they did those is because it's supposed to be the first class, and, well, they needed someone with abilities similar to Cyclops. And, um, well, you know, they couldn't use Cyclops because he's already sad. But so what do we do? Oh, let's just pluck his brother out of the continuity and stick him in the, the character, or one of the characters I was... Most looking forward to seeing them using down the line. Um, screwed. In fact, I was really hoping that they wouldn't even bother with the continuity of the first three X-Men movies with these movies. Just start over. Forget they happen. Um, someone who was involved with the uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine had said that was supposed to be the case. But now they're, now the people who did First Class are saying both this is made to follow Wolverine. And the other movies, so basically even if Wolverine wanted to get away from those movies, now it's tied into them. Because of this. Uh, or according to this. So, I don't even know what's going on there. Marvel's house is pretty much shot to hell right now. Uh, Movie-wise, the Avengers series is one of the only things I got going for them right now. The whole X-Men thing, shot to hell. Shot to hell, I'm sorry, it is. It's just all over the place. It's getting about as sloppy as their comics are lately. Yes, Joe Quesada needs to get the... Ooh, anyway, we won't go there right now. So anyway, yeah, now you know why I'm not going to see that movie. <sighs> I mean, they just... <sighs> you would think that they'd at least try to get the right characters or something. You know, something. But no. At any rate, um, yeah, okay, so, further movie predictions. Well, what should I start with? Okay, let's start with, uh, Conan, the Barbarian, coming out soon. Um, I've seen some trailers for it, and it looks good. Uh, but, you know, trailers can be deceiving. Uh... You know, they, they always pick highlights. There could be some terrible acting buried in there. I don't know yet. I'm not saying there will be either. I am going to say, though, that a lot of other people are going to have that opinion. They're going to look at it and they're going to think, cheesy. Especially since it's a Schwarzenegger remake. And um, they're going to probably just dismiss it. I'm seeing it do not the Grand Slam, but it doing okay at the box office. Um, as for how good it will be, I don't know. Have to wait and see. Uh, next up, uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern's gonna suck. I'm gonna say that right now. 
Now, a lot of people are going to probably think bias factors into this because I'm no fan of the Green Lantern. And when your powers come from a magical cosmic decoder ring from space, you know, you got some issues there. I mean, one of these days, I swear to God, one of these days he's just going to be sitting there. All of a sudden, the Green Lantern Corps is sending me a message. Comes across on his ring. Drink more Ovaltine. I mean, seriously. Yeah, I know, corny, but whatever. Uh, the point is, though, I am trying to look at this from just the standpoint of a movie. Okay? Hero quality or lack thereof notwithstanding. And I've seen the trailers. The effects look terrible. I'm sorry, but they do for the amount that they spent on it. It's especially telling when they, according to sources, uh, some sources, I don't know if these, this is true or not, but um, they supposedly did the effects, then took a look at them, then went back to the studio to get more money in the budget so that they could redo them, or at least touch them up, and it shows they're lousy. Um, in terms of his uh, suit, it goes from being a suit to being this weird glowing projection around him. And I know what they're doing there, and I know uh, why they're showing the muscle fibers and everything, and I know that it's, like, somehow supposed to be symbolic of it coming from within you or something, I, you know. But no, it doesn't work. It looks ridiculous. You know. It's, someone once said that some stuff that looks good on paper doesn't look good on screen all the time. And they were right, but that's one thing that... I mean, if they thought that the old Green Lantern suit would look good, it looked good on paper, but not on the screen, then what the heck were they thinking with this one? This one doesn't look good on paper or on the screen. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. They really should have stuck with the old classic Green Lantern outfit. They should have. Um, but, you know, just overall, and the plot, the plot, I've heard stuff about the plot. It just seems weak um, and pretty vague. Uh, I've had several people complain that they can tell just from the trailers that uh, Hal Jordan's not acting the way he should. So, you know, there's going to be some problems there. I just don't think it's going to be that great. I think it's going to be a big letdown. Every 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 movie has to have a big letdown. I, I swear, every summer you have to have a movie that shouldn't do good because it butchers whatever it's based on. Yet it still does good, and you got that with um, the new X-Men movie. And then you got the movie that everyone thinks is going to be good, but then it's just a huge letdown. And there you got it with Green Lantern. <clears throat> Which brings me to the topic of the movie that a lot of people are trying to say will take that title this year. And that's Transformers Dark of the Moon. Mm -mm. I think it's going to do good. And I think it's going to be good. Not stellar, but good. Especially compared to the last one, it's going to be great. But... I mean, for God's sakes, Michael Bay even came out and admitted that, and admitted that he kind of that he really dropped the ball with that movie. So, um, you know, this one seems to be a lot more plot driven this time, rather than effects driven, um, which the movie should have been in the first place. Any movie should be. I'm sorry, I don't care how big of a blockbuster you're gonna make. I don't care if your excuse is it's a popcorn movie. You should always put the best effort into telling the best story possible. I believe that with books, I believe that with movies, I believe that with games as well, yes. Story counts. But what really sucks people in it is going to be a story that can just pull you right in. These visuals, these, you know, big effects, these oohs and ahs, they last for five seconds. You can watch it again maybe two, three times at the most, then it gets boring. That's what a lot of people said about Avatar. They kept going back to see the effects, but then after that, it just, you know, they stopped noticing the effects and started noticing the movie, and it sucked. And that's what happens with a lot of games. That's what happens with a lot of um, movies. You know, they just put all their effort into the flash and everything, and then there's no substance. Then you have the movies that try too hard to go for some sort of deep substance and wind up coming off extremely preachy, one-sided, and douchey. So, but this one looks to be a lot more plot driven. Um, it doesn't have Megan Fox, and that's a huge improvement. I mean, huge. And speaking of Megan Fox, uh, did you guys hear that she's actually trying to claim that the reason she wouldn't do Transformers 3 
Yeah, she wasn't replaced. She refused to do it because she claims that it was too racy. The Transformer films were too racy and she wasn't... You know, the same chick who then went on to, right after Transformers 2, record Jennifer's body. Thought Transformers was too racy. Mm-hmm. Anyone believe that at all? Or is it more likely that, you know, the fact that she called Michael Bay Hitler because the man dared to take her on a free take her and the rest of the cast on a free tour of the pyramids while they were in Egypt waiting for their film permit to clear. You know. That and the fact that she uh trash talked the crew uh through a hissy fit when stars who had much more history in Hollywood than she did um wouldn't capitulate to her. Oh, and the lovely little statement that she made while speaking on the behalf of the Transformers crew where she'd really love to see Middle America die. Uh, you know, because they don't, they don't, they, she, she thinks they're ideologically deficient or whatever. You know, wishing death on people who don't hold the same ideology as you. Yeah, that's, that's classy. But, you know, whatever. To me, though, that's a big improvement. I don't think she's not as hot as a lot of people try to claim she is. I don't. Um,. Looks to be, like I said, a lot more plot driven this time. Uh, it's actually a very interesting plot that I don't think anyone's ever really considered tackling before. And it looks good. Now, I know a lot of people like to say that it's Unicron and thus they butcher Unicron. I'm not sure. Because, for example, when it came to like um, the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, I was to a point willing to forgive them about Galactus. Um, being that giant cloud, provided that was how he moved through space or something, you know, so long as he had at some point manifested on Earth, looking similar at least to how he looks in the comics. Because, to me, you know, that would have made sense, because it, it, to have this big giant guy floating through space or whatever, as he's appeared at times, you know, it, it, it wouldn't have been plausible. Frankly, the same thing with Unicron, a giant planet that can eat other planets up, you know, that that's not going to look right. Not to mention the physics involved in everything, you know, it, it just, it, you know, it works in an animation, but not, and in a comic, but not in a movie. So if they're going to try to find a way to incorporate it, they'd have to give it a new incarnation. And if, in fact, that is what's eating the planet, or if that is what's happened, is those tentacle things or whatever are eating and assimilating the planet, that could work depending on how it's handled. But I'm not so sure that's Unicron. I know that Shock Blast is supposed to be in this, but um, there's a villain that a lot of people don't touch. But, you know, uh, we'll see. But it, it, it's looking to me to be like it's actually got promise. I never thought I'd say that about a Michael Bay film, but it looks like it's got genuine promise. I mean, the first one was at least entertaining. The second one, not so much. This one looks like it actually has promise. Um, as, and then there's the whole Harry Potter and Twilight thing. Harry Potter, uh, I don't, people are, you know, probably going to ask me about this because I've had people ask me. P Harry Potter's going to do what Harry Potter's going to do. It's going to do well, people have been waiting for it, yada yada, etc, etc. Movies aren't my cup of tea, I really don't watch them except for the riff tracks. And it's not, and before people throw fit, they don't just riff on stuff that's bad anymore. Anything that can be riffed, they riff. People don't seem to get that because they remember Mystery Science Theater and they assume that they think all these movies are bad. Not so. Some they do. The Twilight movies, they definitely do, and that comes through. But, um, you know, it, it, the, 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 the Harry Potter riffs are funny. Uh, the movies, though, and the books, not something I can really seem to get into. I don't know. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I would, I will say though, I think it would be awesome if it outperformed Twilight for once, but that won't happen because the slews of teenage, they get online campaigns for God's sakes, to go see the movie twenty times. They'll even like contribute a ticket pool, so they can buy. There are even people who will buy tickets online that they know they'll never get to go see the movie just so that way the ticket sales go up. You know, they're that obsessed. I haven't seen this level of obsession since Titanic. And it's worse now because they can organize online very efficiently. But, <clears throat> or as efficiently as drooling, screaming teenage girls can. So, yeah. Um, 
those are the big blockbusters that I know of that are coming out. Um, if anyone wants me to talk about others, you know, just drop me a line, let me know what they are, I'll see if I can do them at some point. Um, probably do another video like this. Hopefully before the move, because once I move, no guarantee how fast I'll be able to get back to making videos. I'd like to think it's going to be relatively fast, simply because a lot of what we have now we're getting rid of, so we won't have too much to move, so on and so forth. But, one never knows, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's all the blockbusters that I know of, um, games I'm not really going to do tonight because, wow, there's too much to cover there, especially with E3, which I didn't really get to see, I did follow on Twitter though, no, that might sound weird, but the uh, people who are on Twitter know what I mean. Um, and, uh, I did see some stuff that I liked that was impressive. Um, Nintendo, mostly confusing. Sony was impressive compared to the others, but, you know, nothing spectacularly new or impressive. Um, except for games that we already knew that were coming, but they look great, so, you know, at least that. And Microsoft, wow, we want to go... We won't touch Microsoft, but um, Lord knows they've had it bad enough from everyone else. Except, of course, certain fanboys and certain people who pander and cater to fanboys knowing that it will get them subscribers. And we know who I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah. That being said, um... Mm-hmm. I think that's it for both. Oh, yeah. Uh, so far, though, I do have to say one thing about movies. One last thing. The best movie I've seen so far this year, and I mean it, Battle of Los Angeles. I'm not kidding. So far, best movie this year. Um, and I'm not really seeing any competition to knock it out of that slot yet. Uh, I know some movies are definitely trying to be big and pretentious, and they're not there. No. Um, uh, oh, yeah, and one last thing. Thor. Um... I might do a video individually on Thor, just because it's one I've already seen. It wouldn't be really be so much of a review as just me talking about the movie, but, you know, so there would be spoilers, but by now most people have seen it. And I might include Pirates of the Caribbean 4 with that one, because I saw that one shortly thereafter. Um, but yeah, for now, I think that kind of wraps it up. Uh, definitely picking up Battle of Los Angeles on Blu-ray on Tuesday, so, uh, that'll be it for tonight. See you guys.